I please be thank you all for pressing through the cold weather to be here this morning it is while we had a good time online last week the Lord graced that amen it was it was like seeing it's nothing like you know there's the there's the 2d presentation that the screen can give you but give me the 3d anytime where I can touch and handle and hug you and see your face in person nothing like that nothing like that and it's 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 interesting uh, with saying that uh, we can have a two dimensional relationship with God where he just remains in the book or we can have a 3d relationship with him where he's live and tangible and real and you've 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 encountered him he's encountered you and and you know that the God in the book is for real because how many of you know that there's nothing like an experience with him there's some folks in here this morning that have been through some stuff and you've seen him come out the book you've seen him manifest and make himself real and there is, there's a generation now, they, 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 they're only reading about it. And they need those who have experienced him, that, that have seen him move, that have seen him do awesome things. And so we thank him for that and for what's about to take place, what's about to happen as we're moving into deeper and deeper into this new year. And we're just grateful for you and your steadfast, steadfastness. The, the song we sang, sang earlier said, faithfulness. Faithfulness is what I long for. You know, and the, the, the song, while we're the ones singing it, I hear the Lord singing it. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. And uh, we're, we're taking uh, this opening of the year to say, take my heart and conform it. Take my mind and transform it. Take my will and conform it to yours, to yours. We're, we're opening up the year in this time of consecration and denial of the flesh to say, I want to be like you. I want to be like you. I want to I be changed. I truly want to give myself over to everything that you made me to be, all that you made me to be. And so, Father, with that, we, we open your word with that expectation that uh, in this, you're going to continue to mold us and form us and shape us into the express image of our Jesus. May others get a chance to see him in us. May they get a chance to hear you speak. May they get a chance to see you move as we yield ourselves to you, as we give ourselves over to you in the opening of the year for great manif manifestations into the remainder. And meet us now in the word, Father, with, with grace and with the move of your spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. And the house said, amen, amen and amen. All right, for those who are joining us, we started a teaching last week. We, were, uh, we had a closed online service last week, so those who were watching us uh, via the, uh, the stream saw something other than what we were enjoying in-house. And uh, you had to be a member. Last week was for mem members only. <laughs> that was for members only. But we're going to give them a little sneak into where we started last week in that we're, um, we're starting a series that we've called 10 Things That Block the Blessing. 10 Things That Can Block the Blessing That God Wants Operating in Your Life. And there are times when we can be our own largest enemy. We can be our own biggest enemy. And sometimes that's, <clears throat> that's out of ignorance, okay? Just not knowing what the Word says or, or, or really unaware that there could be something in the lineage even that could be halting or blocking a blessing of God from connecting to our lives. Now, <clears throat> one thing that he's had us doing as we've 
been moving into the new year, and I'm going to jump into point three here in just a minute, uh, is that we've, we, we know it's necessary more than ever that the church starts speaking. I got a couple of amens. The church starts speaking. Uh, it's, it's important that we're speaking his will. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll move into that in, in just a moment. But point number one that we want to uh, review was that of t disobedience. Disobedience will certainly, will certainly stop the blessing of God from manifesting in your life. Now, some might say, well, Pastor, why are you taking time to talk about blessings uh, in front of everything that's going on in the world right now? With the, the, the virus and the curses and the, the upheaval and, and earthquakes and, and uh, tsunamis, how is it that you would dare to stand up here and talk about blessings? Well, let's analyze that for just a minute. Those are some horrible things, amen? Those are horrible things. If we've got someone who is suffering economically, if we've got someone dealing with poverty, what should you preach to them? What should you preach? Well, you, you, you want to... You want to find out what may be causing that. But the opposite of poverty is what? Y'all got to help me do this now. I said the opposite of poverty is what? Prosperity. You're not going to flip that thing unless you bring the word of God into it. And it's the opposite of what you're experiencing. That's why I dare to stand up here this morning in front of the curses that are operating and preach about the blessing of because that's our portion. That's what God has in mind for us. We're not going to bow under the destructive hand of iniquity. It's not what God has for us. I declare blessing, blessing upon God's people, blessing upon us in the midst of all of this. Hear me, it'll be a part of what makes you shine in these last days. It'll very much be a part of what makes the church shine, that, that the blessing is manifesting in the face of curses. We don't have to live like everyone else. We don't have to live like that. And so it's, it's needful. If you're, if you're going through a time of sickness, what should you preach? Healing. Healing. And if you don't have somebody to preach it to you, you need to preach it over yourself. You need, you need to speak that thing. You need to speak it. Now, I can preach it from here, but there are other witnesses that need to join in with this voice. Because out of the mouths of two or three witnesses... Shall every word be established? So you speak healing in the face of sickness. You see, it, we're, not, we're not just trying to give you some canned sermon now. Okay, and as I'm talking with, with, with pastors, well, I want to, I want to uh, you know, throw out something that's canned and, and uh, prepped and all that. I'm like, no, 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 you need to be hearing from God today. We need to be hearing from God today. Things are too turbulent. Things are moving too rapidly. Right now, when the Lord says, I need you to turn left, then we need to turn left. When he says, I need you to, s to swerve right, we need to swerve right. It's, 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 it's not time to lay out something that are months ahead because God will turn this thing next week. So we got to be ready with, with our ears right here. So there are things in the way, things in the way that God says, I want to address those. And during this time of consecration, during the fast, I want you to address these. I want you to take a look at these. These are not just in your way, they're in my way. They're in my way, says God. He says, so number one, obedience, or I'm sorry, d disobedience, disobedience can be a hindrance to the blessing. 
it's equivalent to rebellion. It's equivalent to rebellion. And I haven't seen a spirit of rebellion stir up like I'm seeing now in a long time. Across the nation. Across the nation. Just rebellion. Just people, just, you're not going to tell me what to do. You're just not going to tell me what to do. I'm a free American. And it's it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. There was just a just a plane that was heading from Florida to England. And because one person determined, you are not going to force me to wear a mask. I am not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. They're the rules. It's the law. It's the law. You can't be in the airport without one, and you can't be in that closed capsule without one. I'm not going to do it. I refuse. And let me just say this about the mask. Nobody likes them. They're uncomfortable, but they're primarily to stop you from infecting somebody else. They're primarily for that. And so why wouldn't you want to stop the possibility of your infecting someone else? Uncomfortable, but needful right now. Needful. So the plane is an hour and a half over the Atlantic, and they had to turn it around bring it back because of one person stiff necked and that's what God had to deal with with Israel so many times he called them a stiff necked people I want to bless you you're a stiff necked people just don't want anybody to tell you what to do and it's going to be costly it's, it's going to be costly because there's a cost for sin. How many of you know that? There's, there's a cost for it. And that thing will come around, I guarantee you, it will come around and bite. Okay. Now, that, that person, there's an investigation going on. This person is no longer allowed to fly. Okay. And, and uh, there, are, there are charges and fines and fees that they're uh, uh, looking to tag on that are in, into the thousands. So my question was, was it worth it? Was, was it worth just a little discomfort, which is there to help protect somebody else because you're so rebellious? And that's what disobedience gets. It, 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 it blocks, it, it blocks the, the, the blessing that just comes along with, uh, with conforming. Take my heart and conform to yours to yours the main thing I don't like is that a lot of the rebellion I see going on I can see that person now saying I'm a Christian a lot of them are saying I'm a Christian I'm not gonna wear it cuz I'm a Christian I, I almost want to call myself something else <laughs> with <laughs> with what we see going on if, if Jesus was here do you think he would have worn a mask so we can all get across the Atlantic Yes, sure, sure. So, I mean, it, it's, it, it, there, are, there are churches with signs. There's a, I won't call out the name, big billboard in the parking lot. You pull up, if you wear a mask here, don't even come in. It's a kind of foolishness that's going on. It's crazy. I've never seen anything, anything like this. It goes beyond just natural sense. And so you know there's something devilish at work. Something devilish is at work because the enemy wants, wants destruction to be the course of our lives. We, we, we shared with you last week as we moved into point number two, point number two, which was covering your sins. Number one was d disobedience that will stop you from moving in the blessing. Number two was covering your sins. And the scripture, <clears throat> the primary scripture we shared out of that was out of Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 30. And it reads, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. I'm going to judge you. Every one according to your ways, saith God. Now watch what he says next. 
Repent. Turn from it. Turn from it. And turn yourselves from all your transgressions so that iniquity, which is the curse, shall not be your ruin. Turn from your transgressions, and transgressions line right up with disobedience. Turn from it because iniquity is going to overrun you. The curse will catch up to you and it will overrun you. Iniquity is equivalent to the, the curse. The, the, the Hebrews begin to notice that when sins were committed, that eventually consequences would come and overtake the individual. And so we, we shared with you last week the, the chess board, the chess game, and how in the operation of playing chess that you have to think about moves ahead. You, you, you can't just concentrate on what's immediate, your immediate move, but you have to think five, ten moves ahead because the enemy plays like that. You see, so the initial move, he's not just interested, not just interested in the initial move or your initial act of sin. He's interested in what that move will accomplish. He's interested, see, he wants, he wants to mess up the rest of your life. Not just have you mess up. He wants, he wants this to mess up the rest of your life. And so we're, we're becoming wiser now as we're understanding that, all right, I can do this, but I need to stop and count the cost. Okay? I need to, if, if I do, the, if I make this move right now, five, six moves down the line, I might lose my job. Seven moves down the line, I might lose my marriage. Eight moves down the line, I might lose my home. Ten moves, I might lose my mind. And so we have to, we have to think, think and understand that we've got an enemy that, that isn't just concentrate. <laughs> Proof positive. When he encounters Eve, how many of you know it's not just to get her to eat that fruit? Now, he's trying to talk her into the fruit, but he's already thinking about years down the line, I'm going to mess up all of mankind. If I can get her to do this right now, I'm going to mess up all of mankind for years to come. For years to come. So he's thinking about the end game. And we have to operate that way as well. Understanding God wants blessings for my life. So I've got to operate in accordance to his word. And I understand that I, if, I'm, if I'm one that just loves to be obstinate and, and be rebellious, then that, that's going to work against you. That, it, it's going to work against you. There are some in here today that can, can say, yep, I've, I've gone down that road, and, and, it, and it just hasn't paid off. Okay, it hasn't paid off. And so uh, he, he goes on here with number two to say, if you do mess up, don't cover it up. Don't cover your sins. Okay, now, now rebellion comes in when I'm just, when I've got a, a, a nature that just wants to continue to be disobedient. But anyone can commit a sin and mess up. Amen? Anyone can, can, can do that. And so the Lord has made provision for when those things happen. And he tells us in the New Testament, if you confess it, if you confess your sins, 1 John 1, 9, I'll be faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So he's saying, if you mess up, if you get caught in something, 
don't cover it. Don't cover it up. Because when a sin is committed, a seed is planted. And you got to kill that seed. Because that thing is going to grow roots. It's going to develop a root system. And it will produce a fruit at some point down the line, usually when it's most inconvenient for you. It's going to... Sin is alive. And you have to kill it. You have to kill it. First, you have to expose it. There it is, Lord. I did it. I'm, I'm guilty. The, the exposing is really myself. I, I confess it. I messed up. Come before you. I, I confess this thing to you. And God says, if you do that, you give me opportunity to get to it. You, you give me opportunity to put some blood on it. And to get to that thing and kill it. The longer you let it stay in the ground, the longer it's covered up, the worse the consequences are going to be. And that curse will go from generation to generation and wax worse and worse unless it's dealt with. So here again, the Lord says, repent, turn from it so that iniquity doesn't destroy you. It will, it will ruin you. The word means strip you of everything. It will, it will spoil or strip you of everything. And so these we want to understand as we're praying. I need to confess my sins. Now, we, we, we shared with you that uh, uh, just because you've gotten saved doesn't mean that you don't have to deal with past sins. Okay. Just because you've gotten saved doesn't mean you don't have to deal with past sins. Uh, there's the old song that the old folks used to sing, uh, uh, look at my hands and they look new, I look at my feet and they did too, and stop lying. You had a bunion before you got saved and it's still right there right now. <laughs> let, me, let me share let me share the the, 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 the scripture with you. Uh, my goodness, my goodness. Uh, where are we? Where are we? He says, um, I'm not locating what I'm looking for, but let me just share this. Like, if you've got someone that got into trouble with the IRS, and uh, let, me, let me even change that. You, you, you went and spent all your money, and now you're in credit trouble, major credit trouble. And now you're saved. Now you're saved. How many of you know that just because you got saved, That credit trouble doesn't go away. Doesn't go away. It's, it's, it's right there to meet you and Jesus. Right there. Right there. Now, the good thing is that you do have Jesus. And Jesus can help you go back. People want to be quick to say, oh, let's just forget about the past and move forward. Well, <laughs> you may want to let go of the past, but sometimes the past doesn't want to let go of you. Sometimes it doesn't want to let, and th this is the game the enemy knows. He understands this thing. If he can convince you, if he can get you to cooperate and, and move in sin, he knows there's a long game to this. And that you're going to have to deal with the consequences. So, so here's, what, here's what has to happen for some of us. You got to go back before you can go forward. Sometimes you got to go back, but you get to go back with Jesus, but you still, you still got to go back. Got to go back and deal with some things. You got to talk to Mr. MasterCard. Got to talk to Mr. Visa. Okay. Got to go back and deal with those debts. 
because they want to go forward with you. They want to go forward. And so sometimes we've, we've, we've done some things that require us to go back and confront them before we can go forward. The, the, the scripture uh, that he makes all things new, and, and again, I'm looking for my reference here. Hallelujah. Uh, it, it speaks of your slate being clean, moving forward. He's wiped away the sin that's no longer held against you spiritually. You won't be judged for that anymore. That's erased. We, we, we erase the chalkboard. That's clean. That's not counted against you spiritually. Doesn't mean you don't have to deal with the consequences. Okay. Doesn't mean that at all. And God wants to get to those because some of those are keeping the blessing from connecting. And so when we give ourselves in consecration, we say, Lord, I, there's some things I need to go back and address. Some things that are trying to go forward with me, and they're keeping me from going forward. Keeping the blessing from connecting. Before Israel, after 430 years of bondage, before they left to go forward toward the promised land. Let me hear you say promised land. Before they could go forward with the promised land, God said, stop, stop, wait. When we leave and start going forward, I want you to go back. Now, understand, Israel lived next door to Egypt in Goshen. Okay? They lived in Goshen next door. God could have said, all right, let's leave Goshen. Let's head toward the wilderness, toward the promises. But instead, he said, before we take off, I want you to go back to Egypt. Well, wait a minute, Lord. You've already worn the king out, and he said, we're free. I'm ready to go. God said, before you go, I want you to go back. Go back and confront your captors. Go back and deal with them face to face. Don't be afraid, because I'm going back with you. Oh, my God. I'm going back with you. Don't be afraid. But you need to understand some of you was caught back there. Some of you was stuck back there. I gotta go back and loose you from that. Plus, they've got 430 years of back wages that they owe you. And see, sometimes if you'll be willing to go back and confront something, God will release what was supposed to be yours that was held up when you got stuck. So you don't have to be afraid to go back. It might be, there might be a person in your past that you need to go back and, and confront. There might be a company you need to go back and confront. There may be something there where you got stuck. And, and maybe they did something to you. Maybe you did something to them. But there's something back there that needs to be broken and liberated. I use the credit as an example. There are, there are, are, are prisoners today that are saved, serving Jesus. And their past is still with them. They're still living. You see, because once, once again, the enemy looks at the long game. He wants to mess up not just that moment, but the rest of your life. And so a lot of them, when they come out, unless they get some kind of break, unless they get some kind of break, it's going to be rough. It'll, it'll be a rough life moving forward. And because of that, there's a retention rate with prisoners, 80% go back. You see, the enemy was looking at the long game. 80% go back and stay in the system because past sins want to go forward 
with them. God doesn't want that for any of us. And he's provided a way for us to get set free. Number one, he says, don't do it. Think, think about your moves. Think about what you're about to say, what you're about to do. Because this could affect the rest of your life. And number two, if you mess up, confess that thing. Don't cover it. Don't cover it. We, we all want to forget about it. Forget, and there's some times when that's appropriate. We'll be hitting that later. But if it's some place where you got stuck, and something that still seems to be a part of your now and your future, it may require you going back to confront it. Jesus wants to go back with you and take the blood, take the blood back, because the blood severs curses, breaks curses destroys roots and he wants us free moving forward in this thing thank you Lord thank you Lord repeat this after me let not sin reign in your body that you obey the lust thereof let's do it again let not sin sin will not reign in my body and I will not obey the lust thereof now let's use natural English today say you you ain't the boss of me come on come on just, just you don't you don't run me anymore you're not in charge of, I see the game now I see the game now you want to mess up the rest of my life I will not cooperate with that because for sin to manifest, there has to be cooperation. Let me say it for you again. For sin to manifest, there has to be cooperation. Satan came to Eve, but she cooperated. Adam cooperated. Here, the word is saying, you tell sin. You don't run this anymore. You're not in charge of me anymore. I see the long game, and that's, that's not what God has for me. It's not his portion for me. And so in the, in the, in the face of iniquity, I preach blessings. I dare. I dare to preach blessings. In the face of the curse, I preach blessings. Not just so that we can say, look at us, or, or I've got this, and I've got that. The, the, the blessing is a, it's a type of life. It's a, it's a kind of life that God had in mind when he made us. Again, I'll repeat this. The very first thing he did after he made Adam and Eve, the word says he blessed them. Can I hear you say, that's for me. He blessed them. And so we are speaking to these things. Number three, number three, <clears throat> your words. Your words can be a hindrance to your blessing. Now, we've all heard some, some, some teaching on this, but just give me a few minutes to, to amplify this. And Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 and 21, and I'm going to read the amplified. Well, we'll read... Um, if you don't have the Amplified, let, let's go in and put the King James up. We'll, we'll read that first. And it says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Now let me read this in the Amplified. This is really, really adds more clarity. It says, a man's stomach shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Uh, he will be satisfied with the consequences of his words. With the consequences of his word. Next verse goes on to say, death and life are in the power of the... And those who love it and indulge it will eat the fruit thereof and bear the consequences of their words. The consequences of of their words. Now, when we opened up, we shared with you that 
what we say and what the church is saying right now is more important than any other time in history. Any other point in history, what we say is crucial. It's key. So we have to <clears throat> shine even more light on this topic and on this scripture. Because as we opened up to 2020, 2020, we opened up the d decade of the mouth. Those Hebraic letters <clears throat> actually form a mouth. And God is saying, was clearly saying, as we opened up or moved into the decade, that speaking is going to become an important part of how we move going forward. We know that. We know that what we say becomes very important, and even more so as we move into this decade. Can I get a loud amen right there? <clears throat> So, God, in addressing this, throw up, uh, throw up, um, oh my goodness, Luke, 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 uh, I'm sorry, Acts, throw up Acts chapter 2, verse 17, please, Acts chapter 2, verse 17, thank you, Lord, <clears throat> this is one that we've been hitting, but I have not been able to let this scripture go. And every time I go back and examine it, more light comes. More light comes. Now, this <clears throat> was at the opening of the birth of the church. This is, they're at the day of Pentecost. This is the opening, the opening God gives a prophetic word, hear this, that had been spoken already back in Joel. It had already been spoken by the prophet Joel. And here on this day, it started to manifest. It just started. And Peter rises up and throws the scripture out. He's saying, listen, what, you, what you're seeing start to manifest. Can anybody tell me what began to manifest? Can anybody tell me what began to manifest? Tongues. Speaking. Speaking. It's interesting. The church is birthed and God gives a gift where they start speaking. A couple of you got that. Because he needs somebody in the earth saying what he's saying. First thing that happens, they start speaking. They start talking. Peter gets the revelation. This is that. This is that which Joel prophesied. And the scripture says, and it shall come to pass in the last days. That was the beginning. We're almost 2,000 years later, and it becomes more true with time. Are you hearing me? It becomes even more so with time. Day, saith the Lord, out my spirit on flesh, and your sons and daughters will start speaking. They're going to start speaking. They're going to start saying what I need said. They're going to start uttering forth the things that I need to be spoke. Because when things are spoken, things happen. There are consequences that come, manifestations that take place. And so God is saying, I need you. What I'm doing here at the beginning of the year is aligning your heart and your mind so you start saying what I'm saying. I've got to get in there and deal with your heart and the way you think so you start saying what I'm saying because out of the abundance of the heart, help me somebody, 
the mouth begins to speak. So we, we've moved into a crucial period of time. 2020, God says the decade of the mouth. We're, we're, we're about to close this thing out. I'm going to pour out my spirit. Now, that was, this was the early why. This was the early manifestation. It won't compare to what we're about to see. It will not compare. And so we hit 2020, literally forms, the Hebraic letters literally form a mouth. A mouth. And he says, I need you to start speaking. Now watch this. He says, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Others are going to prophesy. They're going to speak. They're going to speak forth. Prophecy is not just telling, but it's telling. It's speaking forth something. I'm all right. It's speaking forth something in the name of Jesus. It's speaking forth something that hasn't happened yet. And that's what we're capable of. We can speak forth those things that are not. You see, there's some things that, that haven't happened yet, but God wants them to happen now. Somebody say now. God wants them to happen now. And so he needs, he needs his church speaking right now. So he's got to work on that heart. He's got to work on that heart. He's got to work on that mind. So we're saying things that indeed will start to manifest this year. They will begin to manifest this year. Put up that pump. Put up that pump up there. Now, 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 you might say, well, well, Pastor, we're, we're two years into 2020. We're two years in. Well, we shared with you, what you've been doing is just getting the air out the pipes, baby. Okay, you just been, you just been getting the air out. How many of you have used an old pump like this? When you go up to that thing and you first start, you, you begin to think, where's the water? What's going on? Well, what, what you're doing is beginning to gather pressure. You're beginning to gather some pressure. You're beginning to clear the air out. And then, and then once, you've, once you've reached that place, oh, my God, we're about to reach that place. We're about to hit that place. When you reach that place, there's a gushing. There's, a, there's an outpouring. There it is. I'm going to pour out. There's an outpouring that's about to be released upon God's people in these days. And it's exciting. Now, if you look at everything going on around you, 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 you could become depressed and start saying things contrary to what God wants to do. So we, we cannot, we cannot walk by sight. Amen, somebody. We have to walk by what? By faith. We have to walk by faith and not by sight. And keep on pumping, keep on pumping. Because as we're coming into 22, as we're coming into 22, you're going to, we're already starting to see it. You're going to see some answer prayers. You're going to see some manifestations. You're going to see some suddenlies and some right nows. But you and I both know that you've been pumping for a while. You've been pumping. You've been believing. I'm going to tell you, don't stop. Don't stop because the water is about to come forth. It's about to come forth as you continue to, to seek him and speak forth those things. I know it's not, but it shall be. I know it's not, but it shall be. I'm going to speak those things that are not. Shout because I said so. We've got to keep speaking. Somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm not just throwing that out as some casual statement. Don't allow that to become some casual religious statement for you. Don't allow that. Say it with me again. I'm blessed. That's the kind of life God has for us. You might be experiencing something different. Talk to it. Talk to speak. Speak to it. Speak to it. 
Put the rest of that scripture back up over in Acts 2, please. My God. I'm going to pour out. I'm going to pour out because I need you speaking. Once again, when this started, the first thing that happened, they started speaking. It becomes even more meaningful, more of a mandate as we wind this out, as we see the signs of the last days manifesting around us, God says, I need you speaking more. I need you speaking more. Now watch, watch this. And on your young men, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Here God is saying, Watch this. This thing slapped me. Here God is saying, <clears throat> not only not only do I need you speaking more, he said, I'm going to be speaking more. I'm going to be talking more. Even while you're asleep, I'm going to be talking. When you, when you move off into a into a, into a vision, I'm going to be speaking. You're going to be speaking more, and I'm going to be speaking more. That's why you can't plan a sermon eight months out. You don't know what I'm going to say between now and then. You don't know what I'm doing right now. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. I'm going to be speaking in these last days. I'm going to give you what to say. I'm going to show you what the enemy is doing. I'm going to show you how to counter him. I'm going to show you how to move. Somebody say in the last days. Say speak Lord. I'm telling you this thing's about to get good. This thing's, this thing's about to get good. So I got to get the stuff out of my life that might be in the way. I got to I got to get these things that might be blocking him. I want to hear him clearly. There might be some obstructions, some obstructions in the pipe. Here God is saying, I need you to, I need you to look down and pay attention. I need you to get in the mirror. I need to hit these things. I need to hit these things. Your, your words, your words, life and death. Or in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue can be used as a weapon. It is a weapon. Scripture calls it a two-edged sword. Two-edged sword. I can build up with it. I can tear down with it. It's, it's that powerful. There are, hear this, there are kids, young kids, committing suicide because of what other kids are saying. It's never been this bad because of what others are saying, life and death, life and death. I can bless with this. And I can curse with it. I can curse with it. Now, I'm not talking about the four-letter words either. Now, if, if the four-letter words come out the pump, <laughs> then we know we got some cleansing we need to do down there anyway. Amen? But I'm, I'm speaking to the fact that we can, we can build people. We can tear them down. We need to understand the spiritual things that connect to what we say. Spiritual things that connect to what we say. I'll, 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 I'll close with this. But we, we see God operating this way from the very beginning. From the very beginning, we see his spirit moving up on the waters back in Genesis. And the word says that <clears throat> the earth was flooded and it was dark. 
in utter darkness. It had been destroyed once before. And what we're coming up on, what we come up on in Genesis, <clears throat> the phrase in the beginning means a period of time. It's our period of time. There was a period before us. There was a period of time before us, and it was during that time that the enemy was kicked out of heaven to earth. And the earth was utterly destroyed. So there's a lot of argument out there as to how old the earth is. And uh, there, are, there are those who are just caught up in the fact that it's only 6,000 years old. But the truth is, is that man as we know him is only 6,000 years old. But there was something before us. And the destroyer was kicked out of heaven into earth. All was destroyed. All was wrecked. The proof is that the Lord, after he makes Adam and Eve and he blesses them, in that same verse he goes on to say to the two of them, Now be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth replenish the earth. There was something here before us. The Jurassic Age was in that period of time. Utter destruction came and we see the Spirit of God now moving up on a destroyed earth, completely flooded and in utter darkness. Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is the part of God where His power is. Somebody say power. power. The Greek word is dunamis. It's our word for dynamite. So if you can picture that, there is an explosive force moving up on the waters. Hovering is the term. It's the Hebraic term. Hovering upon the face of the waters, ready to be released upon a damaged earth. I, 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 I hope you're applying this to yourself right now. There's the potential, the dynamic power of God hovering, waiting to move up on damage. Oh, let me say it over here. Let me... Let me say it over here. There's a, there's a presence. The, the dynamic power of God. Present. Ready to move up on damage. But he can't, but he can't do anything. Can't do anything. Something has to happen. Something has to happen before he can move. And we read the next verse there in Genesis, and it, and it leaps out with a different light. The scripture says, and God said. <laughs> and God said. Look at somebody and say, say it. Tell them, say it, say it. Don't keep your mouth shut. Say it, speak it. Let there be light. Let there be light. And the Spirit moved upon what was said. That potential can be loosed until somebody says something. That power can be released until somebody says something. Until it's spoken. Until there's a command given. That potential will remain held back. In the last days, I'm going to pour out my Spirit, says God. And your sons and daughters shall speak. 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 Well, the last thing I want to do is to get an obstruction between me and that power. 
I don't want to live a life that will cause that power to resist me, draw away from me. Not today. Not today. May, maybe two years ago, but not today. Things are, things are happening. Things are crazy now. Things are crazy now. I need somebody to shout, speak real loud right there. I need... Power of God didn't move, didn't move until God said something. Until he said something. Now I've got news for you and me. We're made in his image. And in his likeness. And the same Holy Ghost that was around in Genesis. The same one that brought the light forward can bring forth the promises in our life right now. I believe he's hovering right now. I, I believe he's hovering. I believe he's, he's moving and he's waiting. He's waiting on the people of God. Speak. Speak. Manifested prayers. Look at somebody say it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. This is this is the year. It's going to start. It's going to start. It's going to start. Prophecies coming to pass. Realities being changed. An intervention of heaven into earth upon the people of God. I declare it this morning. Let the blessing connect. Let there be light. In the name of Jesus, let the light shine upon you. Let the promises of God anchor and be established in your life. May you be a beacon of the kingdom in a darkening place. We refuse to walk with darkness. We refuse. We refuse. I will walk in obedience. I won't cover my sins. And I will speak. I will speak in Jesus' name. And now, Father, let this word, let this word brew and stew and churn and turn in the hearts and spirits of your people today. And may it bring forth sons and daughters that are speaking with faith and saying the things that you're saying. And where they've not seen the results, let encouragement connect from this. Let encouragement connect to say it's going to happen. Keep priming the pump. Look, look in the mirror and inspect for any obstructions, but you're going to see what you're saying. My God, you're going to see what you're saying. You're going to see what you're saying. In the name of the living Jesus. Hallelujah. And God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Let's give them applause as they too receive the word of God. We'll see you next week in Jesus' name. Come on, church. Release a shout in this house. Release a shout. Hallelujah.